Amen. Let's give God some praise up here in the building. Amen. God has done something for you. Just take one hand and let's just wave it in the air. Act like you just don't care. Amen. Now if he's really been good to you, raise both hands up in the air. And let's say I'm giving up on myself and I'm turning everything over to you, Jesus. Will you say amen? amen. Two hands up means I'm giving up. Yes. Are you with me, everybody? Yes. And we're giving God some praise here in the house of God today. Will you say amen? amen. I want to just say a special thanks to your pastor for allowing me to occupy his pulpit. Pastor Paul, I do appreciate the opportunity to stand behind your pulpit and to share the word of God. I want to bring you greetings in behalf of our conference president, Pastor Hubert J. Morrell, Jr., along with uh, Ms. Gwendolyn Parker, who serves as our chief financial officer, and the rest of the 48,000 plus members that comprise this great uh, Southeastern Conference of ours. Will you say amen? amen? We are estimating that by the end of this year, uh, Southeastern Conference will be 50,000 in membership strong. Will you say amen? amen? We're one of the fastest growing conferences in the United States. Let the church family say amen. amen. We're the baby conference of, uh, Southern, of the Southern Union, but yet we're walking like we're grown. Will you say amen? amen. It's good to see so many of you and uh, to come back and to share the word of God with you. It is always a delight and a pleasure to have this time. I, I see people that I know that I should say something about, but I'm afraid if I don't, uh, if I say something, I'm going to overlook a whole lot of people. And I know that when I go to camp meeting, I'm going to be in a lot of trouble. Will you say amen? amen? Incidentally, we are having camp meeting in 2016. Amen. amen. And we're planning on having a real big camp meeting, so we are presently preparing our new, uh, with our new camp ranger, uh, Brother Fullwood has retired, and we now uh, got another Wood person by the name of Brother Blackwood. So it appears that uh, Southeastern can't stay out of the woods. So we are, we are grateful. He is on the job. He is uh, very highly qualified. Uh, we actually acquired him from the Allegheny West Conference and we brought him down to sunny Florida where he can uh, begin to flourish a little bit. Will you say amen? I would like to say, if I don't do this, I have, I will get in trouble. My church daughter is present here, and so if I don't acknowledge her and her family, uh, well, let's just say that's another story. So I'm going to ask that, uh, Walt, if you would get that young lady of yours and stand her, stand her up, please, and so that I can, uh, and, and my lovely two granddaughters, if you would uh, have them to stand as well. So these, these, this is family people. Touch your neighbor and say, that's his family. All right, so now the rest of you can't get offended if I don't call your name because uh, uh, that's family. So we, we're just making that uh, special. Uh, I am grateful that uh, Sister Tracy uh, remembered me that somebody like me can come and share the word of God with you. And so Sister Tracy, where are you? I saw you, okay, bless you. I wanna thank you for the invite. And uh, we uh, hope and pray that we can have a good time here with Jesus. Will you say amen? amen. Now touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor, it's good to see you in church today. Amen. Turn to your other neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor, it's also good to see you in church. Amen. Touch your neighbor in front of you and say, neighbor, neighbor. would you please shut up so the preacher can preach? Let the family of God say amen. amen. Let the church say amen. amen. Today I want to see if I can just uh, agitate your thoughts a little bit on the subject that God has placed on my heart. It's a subject that I have entitled, The Power of Influence. 
the power of influence. And if you have your Bibles, I want you to journey with me, please, to the book of Matthew. What book did I say, everybody? Matthew, Matthew chapter 5, the first book of the New Testament. Matthew chapter 5, and here I would like to acquaint your thoughts with verse 13. When you have it, say amen. amen. And the Bible puts it this way, Matthew chapter 5 and verse 13. The Bible says, ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has lost its, what everyone? Wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast, what everyone? Cast out and to be trodden under the foot of men. Father God, have your way this day, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Someone has said that the environment in which one lives determines the outcome of that person's life. I once heard Pastor Wentley Phipps say, if you lie down with dogs, you will get up with fleas. This is because we are made by the influence we receive from others. One of the truest forms of influence is that of the culture that we grew up in. Let the church family say amen. amen. We talk the way our culture tells us we ought to talk. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. We eat what our culture tells us we must eat. Right. Sound like pigeon peas and rice. Yeah. We go where our culture tell us we must go. Talking about black eyed peas and collard greens. Are you with me church family? We are a people that are constantly influenced by the environment to which we are a part of. In other words, we are who we are because of the environment we grew in. We grew up in, pardon me. So that it, it matters not what we may think of ourselves and so forth or how far we try to distance ourselves, but we talk the way we talk because of the environment to which we grew up in. Can I get an amen here in the house of God? We often realize this in the lives when we see our young people and sometimes grown-ups who tend to follow the social fads that society brings upon us and sometimes we drop our pants if we're young and, and uh, uh, we drop our pants so that we show more than what we should be seeing. Amen. Amen. Or we dread our hair so that we can fit into the particular culture or the style of life to which we are most comfortable with. Now we are told that the reason why we are willing to do this is because of something called social culture. And that is, it tells us how we are supposed to act, how we are supposed to feel about issues, how we are supposed to look and appear to others. It's all because of the influence that has influenced us to be who we are. When we consider God though, and the power of what it means to be a child of God, we understand that God has a unique and relevant influence that he desires for each of us here in this house of God of worship today. And that is, God desires for his people not to be followers, but leaders. For when we consider that we are children of the Most High King, we understand that there is a certain responsibility that comes with being a child of God. Can I get a witness here in the house of God? Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, you're a child of God. Touch your other neighbor and say, neighbor, don't go there. 
Amen. Let the church say amen. amen. For you see, God desires that the child of God to influence the world and not the world to influence his children. We understand this when we read in the Bible, in the book of Matthew, and I want you to journey there with me, please. Matthew chapter 5, and we want to examine verse 16. Here's what the Word of God says. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 16. When you have it, say amen. amen. The Bible puts it this way. The Bible says, let your, what everyone? Light. Your light so shine before men that they may, what everyone? See your good works, not their good works, but your good works, and do what else? And glorify your Father which is in heaven. Let's be clear that it is the intent of God for his children to influence the world rather than for the world to influence us. Will you say amen? That means then that we ought to walk a certain way. We ought to look a certain way. We ought to behave a certain way. We ought to eat a certain way. We ought to appear a certain way. And most of all, we ought to love a certain way. Will you say amen? There has to be something different about us that makes us so that we are not like the people of the world, but that we are like the people of God. Will you say amen? So that we all know how to live with one another. Another. We all know how to work with one another. We all know how to eat with one another. And we all know how to fellowship with one another. Because as children of God, there is a candor of character that God expects out of us. Will you say amen? Now, let's be clear. God desires each of us to have a positive influence on everyone, including those who attend church with us. Amen lights. So that, amen light. So that when it comes to church, we all must learn how to use our influence to influence people who may be in church to love us the way how we ought to be loved. Will you say amen? Now let's be clear. There are some people in church. I did just say some people. Not all. Touch your neighbor and say he's not talking about everybody. There are some people in church who can be hard to love. Amen. TV screens. There are some people who can get on your absolute, positively, undeniably last nerve. Will you say amen? amen? But yet, God expects for us to cast an influence upon these individuals to know that they are loved in spite of their personality that they may possess. Will you say amen? amen. In other words, God says we ought to love everybody. Why? Because we, the Bible makes it clear, we are the light of the world. And when people see our positive influence, when people see the light that we are projecting, when people see that we are willing to, to, to reach in and pull out the best of character that we have, then people understand that God is willing to work with them. Will you say amen? amen. And I'm actually trying to pull out my little flashlight that I bought here with me. I'm trying to impress you all. So somebody say the preacher is trying to impress us. Okay, yeah, you, you see, sometimes, can somebody hit the lights in the building for me? Somebody hit the lights, just hit the lights right quick. Don't work with the preacher. Okay, all right, hit, hit these lights right up here for me. Don't worry, we all children of God, we're going to act a certain way. Will you say amen? Now, can you notice, can everyone see this light? It, it doesn't matter how bright the light is. If we lift up the little light that we have, it doesn't make any difference in a world of darkness. If we turn on our light of influence, we can influence the world. Will you say amen? amen. Now turn the lights on before somebody say the church didn't pay the light bill. 
Amen. Will you say amen? amen. Uh, and, and just for the record, Pastor, I want you to know that uh, uh, the numbers that you got uh, uh, on your books at the conference office is the numbers that your church clerk sent us, just for the record. I, I had to come back and keep him young, everybody. Okay. All right. Now, let's, let's come back. Here, here's where we are. We must be in the world, but not of the world. Plainly stating it, we don't do what they do. We don't go where they go. We don't act the way how they act because we are a positive light for Jesus. Will you say amen? Now, I like how the Bible puts it in the book of Matthew chapter 5. Matthew, what book did I say, everyone? Oops. Matthew chapter 5. Don't worry about this. We got it. Uh, IT got it all worked out. Matthew chapter 5. And we want to examine verse 13. When you have it, say amen. amen. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 13. When you have it, let the church say amen. amen. Now the Bible says that ye are the what everyone? You are the salt of the earth. Are you with me? That's what the word of God says. The Bible says that we are the salt of the earth. Are you with me? So it doesn't matter if you fat or skinny, tall, pretty, or ugly, you're still salt. Amen. Will you say amen? amen? Touch your neighbor and say, you just like me. Amen. Touch your other neighbor and say, you still just like me. Amen. Now touch your neighbor in front and say, but this salt look prettier than that salt. No, don't go there. Don't go there. Don't go there. Whatever you do, don't go there. Amen, church family. Amen. Notice what the Bible says. If the salt has lost its savor, if the salt has lost its, its ability to influence, the Bible says that the salt is good for nothing. Are you with me? Once you and I lose our ability to influence the world, God can't use us. Are you with me? If we are seriously talking about radically changing this society on December the 12th, it's going to take us to be salty. Are you with me? And every good cook knows that you begin a good pot of soup with salt and water. Are you with me? If you don't put the salt in the water, you have already messed up the soup. Somebody here ought to say amen. amen. Are you with me? Now you should see how some of these ladies are looking. I think I can make a good part. No, yeah, we'll leave that alone. But here's what the Bible tells us. The Bible says, but we are to be cast under, trodden under foot of men if we have lost our ability to influence. Will you say amen? amen. When we became children of God, when we became Christians, we gained the ability to influence the world. God gave us that ability. Are you with me, everybody? We were made not to follow, but to lead. Are you with me? Everybody in this room is a leader. I don't care how people talk about you. I don't care what people say, say about you. I don't care how people look at you. None of that means anything. When you became a child of God, God instilled within you the ability to influence. Are you with me? And all you have to do is live the character or live the Christian life that God has given or uh, required of us and you automatically cast an influence. So then, when the people come here on December the 12th through the 26th, all you have to do is show up and do exactly what the pastor said. Hey, how are you doing today? Come on up here. We got some juice and are you with me? If you are friendly and put the Christian smile on your face, if your big toe is hurting, don't let us know. Are you with me? Are you with me? Just say thank you, Jesus, and walk on that big toe anyhow. Will you say amen? 
Let the church say amen. amen. And smile your way all the way to the drink table and let's give God some praise. Will you say amen? amen. It is important then, church, that we understand that God expects for us to be a positive influence for the church. He expects for us to be the children that he desires for us to be. If we are going to be his children, then we have to learn how to be a little salty for Jesus. Will you say amen? amen. Now, to be a little salty for Jesus, you got to spread the salt all around. Yes. Are you with me? Yes. Now, that's the first problem with you seven-day adventurers. <laughs> Some of you are like, oh, no, he's dropping salt on the floor. <laughs> it's called a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> Let the church say amen. amen. But if you're going to share the love of God, you got to spread it all around. Will you say amen? amen. Are you with me, church family? Amen. Don't be afraid to share a little love over there. Sometimes you got to put a little extra over there. Will you say amen? amen? But that's what it's all about. Casting the influence, changing the world so that everywhere that people go, they can see that you're spreading the salt of Jesus' influence around everywhere you go. Will you say amen? amen. What the world is looking for are characters of people who are willing to take what God has given them and to change the world in which God has placed them up to be a part of. If you and I are going to be successful in changing the world, we must be willing to share the love of God. Will you say amen? amen. Now, now, Pastor, I, I, I'm trying not to put too much on your floor down here. Okay, now, the Pastor, I got the pastor's approval, so I don't care what you all say over there. <laughs> Amen, church family. Amen. I, you, I love the music. Awesome, awesome. I, I can come here and sit in church a couple of times here. Will you say amen? amen? It is because of influence, our ability to influence, that we can be used by God to be of service for him. Will you say amen? It is not until we are willing to use what God has given us. Now, there may be some in the church today who may be saying, I am not capable of influence. And I want to put that to rest. Every person in here is a true possibility of what God intends for you to become. You may have walked in those doors today a nobody, but with God, you can walk out somebody. Are you with me? You probably couldn't sing a lick how I couldn't sing when I first got joined the church. Are you with me? My wife probably would tell you I still can't sing. But I can at least hold a note. Touch your neighbor and say the preacher can hold a note now. Will you say amen? But whatever we apply ourselves to do, God is able to take what we give to him and make something positive out of it. Will you say amen? amen. So that we can influence all of society because we are to be used by God to do so. Will you say amen? amen. Now listen to me, church family. As salt, we are in charge of our influence. Are you with me? And one of the things that we must do is influence the world for God. We must change the way how the world see Adventists. Amen. Are you aware that Adventists is the fastest growing denomination in North America? Amen. There is no other religion that is growing faster than us. Touch your neighbor and say, we must be doing something right. Are you with me? We are growing leaps and bounds, and that's because there are individuals who are getting out doing things, and they're knocking on doors through personal ministry. They're going out, and at three, at, at what time was that, Pastor? With 4.30? At 4.30, and they're going out passing out handbills. Now, I didn't see too many hands going up. <laughs> So can I try it again, Pastor? The pastor wants to know how many people want to be used by God to go out and pass out some handbills. Okay. At 4.30. Can I see some showing of hands? I, I think we're about to get 32 up in the building here, Pastor. 
I, I, amen. Let the church say amen. amen. Now listen, oftentimes, a lot of times we think you got to pass out a lot of handbills, but it only takes about if 32 people pass out at least just three, knock on three doors. You'd be surprised what can be done with three times 32. Are you with me, everybody? Okay. One, one of the things that we must understand is that God has led us to a more disciplined lifestyle. One that is not characterized by lying, cheating, stealing, gossiping, slandering, immoral sex, drinking, and the newest thing on the table for some Adventists, clubbing. Are you with me? I once heard of a deacon board having a deacon board meeting pastor at the club. <laughs> On Friday night, by the way. <laughs> Talking about who's going to collect the offering the next morning. Well, that's another story. God has influenced us to live a sober life. Adventists ought to look like Adventists. We need to look like Seventh-day Adventists. Amen. Can I get an amen? amen? Now, some of us can look at better than others, but that's okay. Amen. Let's just keep on looking what we're looking at. Will you say amen? amen. Are you with me, church family? Amen. God desires for us to be a positive influence on everyone we come in contact. For when the church genuinely loves one another, like what I saw when the dear member had that crisis over there, I saw members reacting. You do that because you care. Are you with me? That is not something you can buy at Publix. You can't get that from the university. That comes because that person has a relationship with me. That person has influenced my life. And so I want to show that person that I now care about them. The greatest want of the world is the want of men and women who cannot be bought or sold. Men who in their inmost heart is true to duty as the needle is to the pole. Men who are not afraid to call wrong or sin by its right name. Will you say amen? amen. The greatest desire is of the world is to be influenced by people who are trying to do right. Are you with me? If you want to change the world, change how you influence people. Instead of talking about me, talk to me. If there's a problem in my life, don't get on the phone and call sister so and so. Set up a little private time with me. And don't come condemning me. I already know what the Bible says. Amen, light. Are you with me? I'm a seven-day Adventist. Don't you know I already know what the Bible says? Are you with me? Are you with me, church family? So what you need to tell me, what you need to tell me, listen, let's talk a little bit. I'm noticing some things going on here, but I want to see what we can do to help you out. If I'm offending you, please forgive me. It's only, I'm only here because I care. Are you with me? You can get more with sugar than you can with vinegar. Are you with me, everybody? You can have the truth, but don't know how to present the truth. Are you with me? And if you don't know how to present it, like the pastor say, the best thing for you to do, well, I'm going to take it off the pastor. Like what I say, it might be good for you to just stay home. Oh, come, come, I'm going to do what the pastor did. Come and just don't tell him you're a seven-day Adventist. Will you say amen? <laughs> Let the church say amen. amen. Listen to me, church family. 
Ralph Brewer, in his book entitled Manners and Customs of Bible Times, tells us that the plan of God that God had for Israel was that when Israel when he took them into the promised land, he had two things to accomplish, that is God. The first thing, he had to fulfill his promise that he would take them to a land that is flowing with milk and honey. He fulfilled that. But the second purpose that God had in putting Israel where it is today was that God knew that in order to travel from Europe and Asia to Africa and from Africa to Europe and Asia, you would have to come through that one strip of land and there as you come through that strip of land, you could not help but be influenced by the people of God serving the God of the universe. In other words, God has strategically placed every last person in this building where we are today. You're not on your job just to be there. God has placed you there. Are you with me? Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm where God wants me to be. God has placed you there to become a positive influence for him. And all you have to do is wait your turn. Somebody is going to go through a crisis. And if you would just tell that person, listen, can I pray for you? Amen. They have death in the family. I'm coming by to visit you. Are you with me? It doesn't take a lot to be a positive influence. All it takes is the, your willingness to be used by God. Are you with me? Somebody has lost their job. Pray for them. And if you got a few extra dollars, pull a couple of dollars out of your pocket and place in their hands. Are you with me, church family? This is what we call being positive, a positive influence for good. If we are going to change the world, we must do it through a positive influence. Will you say amen? amen. Now listen to me, church family. I believe that everybody can positively change the world. We live in a society where everything is being influenced. We are constantly being influenced by the society that we live in. Constantly being influenced by the society that we live in. Don't worry, it's okay. We're constantly being influenced by the society that we live in. Are you with me? I turn it off for you. Constantly being influenced. Are you with me, everybody? Constantly. Now, eventually, somebody's going to smell what I just sprayed. Do you smell it? Now, does it make you feel mad? It makes you think like it might be time to eat. Yeah. Are you with me? Now, where are you going? I just influence you through this. Just a simple can of air freshener. And it gave you the ability to think about cinnamons and apples. Are you with me? I never told you anything about cinnamons and apple, but you already thinking, boy, that smells good. I can probably eat some of that. Are you with me? That, that's because we all have the ability to influence. Now, I'm getting ready to wrap this up, but I want to wrap it up by saying this. Every person in this building today is a possible influence for good or for evil. Each of us must determine what we're going to do with what God has given us. Are you with me? Now, let me say this, church family. The world has enough bad influences. They got enough bad influence. They turned the lights out over here and kept them out over here. <laughs> it's all good what we want to see now is how we can change the world Amen. how can we get the mayor of Delray to yeah. become a member of yeah. the daughter of Zion all right. church all right. All right. 
aim big. Don't shoot with a small gun. Shoot with a cannon. Are you with me? Somebody in this building knows somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody who knows the mayor. Don't stop until the mayor is a member of this congregation. Are you with me? Are you with me, church family? Aim big. If you get the mayor, somehow you're going to pull some other politicians to follow him. Are you with me? And before you know it, you'll be getting more money, not from the conference pastor. You'll be getting it from the city. How do I know this? We did something in West Palm Beach when I was the pastor there. We decided to go out into the community and to just feed the homeless. We orchestrated the entire church family together. The Pathfinders, we got the basketball team, we got personal ministries, we got community service, and everybody was active on those days. Are you with me, church family? What would happen when the hurricanes began to come through the community, the city of West Palm Beach was so impressed with the Adventist church that it put us in charge of food distribution. Are you with me, church family? Are you with me, church family? Don't tell me we can't change society. Don't tell me we can't change the world. All it takes is a willingness on our part to be consistent in serving the master. And this community can be changed. You got too many seven day Adventists in this building. Too many of us for us not to change this city. It's too many of you. Are you with me? Are you with me, church family? But what it takes is our willingness to be a positive influence for Jesus. Now, I got to wrap this up. So here's how I'm going to do this. I want to start out by saying that as Christians, if we're willing to be a positive influence for God, that means that we must be willing to consecrate ourselves for service. Are you with me? And not just any service, not just doing it any kind of way. We have to personally and intentionally make the intention that I am going to be of service for God. Are you with me? So I'm going to ask with heads bowed, eyes closed, church praying. I'm going to ask for those individuals who want to say to God, Father, I want to be set aside to become a positive influence for you. I want to be used by you, Father. No hoopla, just a simple desire to do it your way. I want to serve you. I want to be faithful to you. I want to do, Father, Things in such a way that you are receiving glory by my actions. If it is your desire to be set aside that you can be a positive influence for Jesus, I want to ask that you would just stand with me right now to your feet. Just stand with me. You want to be used by God. And let me say this. God needs young people. Thank you. Praise the church. Let the church say amen. amen. Willing to do it God's way. But you know sometimes we make that decision that I want to be used by God. But sometimes the call comes and it's greater. We have to be consecrated to be used by God. I want to ask at this time if I can have the elders of the church to just come down and line up across the, the front of the church right quick, please. All of the elders of the church, if you would just come and line up with me at this time. Thank you, elders. We can line up down front, please.
let the church say amen. amen. If we're going to change the world, let's put the devil on the run. We're going to have an anointing service at this time. But I want to do it a little different. I want to first start out with our young people in the church. Our young people. Because they are the future of this church. They are the ones who are going to be here tomorrow when the rest of us are gone. They are your new leaders, your new pastor, your new first elders. They are the ones who must herald this gospel forward. And I'm going to ask uh, young people, if you're willing to make this commitment to Christ, if you're willing to say that I want to pray that God will ultimately make my own life a testimony for him. I want to pray that the Holy Spirit will fill my heart and allow me to be used by him. I want to pray that the evangelists that are going to be coming out night after night, if they, they would have the power to be uh, a positive influence for God. I want to pray that the community will be ultimately changed as a result of what is going to take place here today. I want to pray the be able to pray through the power of prayer and influence God to keep the weather bright and dry. I want to pray that the preaching of God's word will find residence in every heart. I want to pray that the nightly visitors will multiply night after night and swell in such a way that it brings glory to God. I want to pray that the transportation and the campaign site will be one that will bring glory to God. Young people, we're going to invite you to just come down at this time. Just make your way. We can have our young people to just come on down. Come on down. You're standing, but you want to be used by God. I see some coming. Praise God. See others coming. Young adults, if you can make your way coming on down as well. Let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say amen. amen. And we're going to ask that elders, if we can make them two-sentence prayers. Just find your way to somebody. They're waiting on you. Two-sentence prayers, please. We're just being anointed so that we can be appointed to go out and do the work of ministry. Let the church say amen. Look at this church. Look at your young people coming down saying that they want to be used by God. Isn't that awesome everybody? What an awesome God we serve. Let's give God some praise up here in the building today. Our young people saying they want God to take their lives. They want to be a positive influence for him. Let the church say amen. We're giving God the glory. We're giving God the praise up in the building here today. Others are still coming. Others are still coming. Let the church say amen. The church is going to be in good hands because God's people are already, he's already setting up the future leaders of Daughter of Zion. Will you say amen? Amen. Let the church say amen. All right. Amen, everybody. Two sentence prayers. Two sentence prayers, elders. All right. We need now, we need to have, we need to have, we can have our, we can have our young adults to please start making their way down, please. All of our young adults, if you would please start making your way down. While we're doing this, we're just going to have a word of prayer. Pardon me, we're going to have a, a, some special music brought to us. Amen. By two well-qualified individuals. Amen. Let the church say amen. amen. Young adults, let's make our way down. We got some empty, empty elders over here waiting to anoint somebody on this side of the church. Come on down. got some elders who are waiting. Anyone interested? Just come on down at this time. Adults, if we have any adults, please make your way on down at this time. Any adults? Or anybody who's an adult that thinks that you're a young person, come on down. You are young since we're going to live eternally. Just as young as we feel. Let the church say amen. I am the I have heard thy 
voice and it told thy love to me. And I long to rise in the arms of faith and be closer drawn to thee consecrate me now to thy service lord by the power of grace a steadfast hope, and my will be lost in the will draw me near, will near, oh blessed Lord, cross where thou hast died, O oh, draw me Can we have some of you to come over? 
to this land we have Lord, we can serve you over on this side to the cross where the hurts go we have someone we're waiting to serve someone here have someone to come over the pastor is available we have two elders here waiting to assist someone if we have anyone else over there, please come Let's keep that music going softly, please. At last and deep, my heart Such a worm. At the cross, my Lord. Help us out. At the cross. At the cross. cross come on now well oh, at, at the cross, cross at oh at the cross oh, where I, I first saw the light, light. well and the burdens of my heart rolled away my lord he was there by faith I received my side and now I am happy all the day. Sing that first verse again. Oh, would the cross at last and be well my Savior's be and did my sovereign and did my sovereign would he devote well a such a word for such for such a word oh come on sing it like you need it now let's lift up your voices oh at the cross oh at the cross where I first saw the light I know it was the blood. Well, I know it was the blood. Yeah, 
I know it was the blood. Well, I know it was the blood. Well, for me, hey, one day I was lost. Oh, he died upon the cross. Yes, I know it was the blood. He hung his head and died. He hung his head. Yeah, he hung his head and died. Come on and say he hung his head and died. I want to say that he hung his head and died. Just for me. Yeah, one day when I was lost. He cross. died upon the cross. I and know it was the blood for me. Well, 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 well. Mm. Well, I know it was the blood. Talking about the blood. Mighty, 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 mighty blood. Well, was the blood for me. One day, one day, when I was lost, well, he died upon the cross. I know it was the blood for me. Let the family of God say amen. Isn't God an awesome God? Isn't God a wonderful God? Hasn't God blessed you today? Yes. Now, you know, sometimes when you come to church, you're supposed to walk away with a blessing. Are you with me? Every time you come to church, you're supposed to walk away with a blessing. So, bro, Pastor, before I turn things back over to you, I want to just see if we can be a blessing to somebody. I, I don't need to go home with this in, uh, with me. So is there anybody who wants to, a blessing today? Yes. Amen. Is there anybody else who needs for a blessing here? Okay, all right, okay. Now, I don't want to take the salt home with me either, so anybody need some salt? I see a hand all the way in the back. Can, can we give the salt? Uh, Brother Deacon, could you take that salt to that hand all the way in the back? Okay, amen. So we don't want it to be said that you came to church and you left out of here without a blessing. Will you say amen? Let the church say amen. amen. Isn't God an awesome God? Amen. You got people coming to church getting free air freshener. They, they didn't even know it. That's how awesome our God is. Well, Pastor, we want to turn this back over to you. Elder, we want to thank you so much for allowing the Lord to use you today to teach us how to be salty. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much for that. And we are not done with our prayer today. As we're praying, as we're going into this season of evangelism, we want you to know um, that there are those of you here that have loved ones that you wish could have been a part of this anointing service today. As you exit the sanctuary on your way out, you will see on the table. If you open those doors for me right now, I want to make sure that's still there. I can't see it from this angle, but it's over there, over there. There is a large scroll. And what we want you to do when you leave here is you exit. If there is a loved one, if there is somebody that you need, that you know needs to be covered by the blood of Jesus Christ, that there's somebody that you want the church to continue to pray for, that they will show up at this meeting that's going to begin on the 12th. We want you to just write that name. Just write that name on that scroll as you exit and that's going to be our prayer scroll. As we come to this thing, the Bible says that we are to come boldly before the throne of grace. That as we write those names on there, every time we come past, past that scroll, that we will present before the throne of God with power and with boldness the names that are written on that thing. God said when you bring your all and you put your all all on the altar. He says that he will do the thing that he said he will do. And so when you write that name on there, do not, members of Daughter of Zion, you might be a guest, I'm not talking, but those of us that are members, those of us that have this oil covering us now, our influence is going to go up before the throne. Did you know you have influence with God? Did you have influence? Ellen White says this, she says, I saw that one saint, that one saint, that one saint, if they were right, 
could move the arm of God. And so as we walk by, and there are names that are going to be written on that scroll. When you walk by, just use some of your influence with God. And lift that name. Lift, you might not take the time to read everyone. I'm going to do that. As that thing sits out there during the week, I'm going to come and I'm going to pray over each and every single one of the names that are written on that scroll. But when you just happen to walk by, it's sitting, going to be sitting out there next Sabbath, going to be sitting out there on the 12th. As you walk by, just say, Lord, do what you said you could do to reach and to save the names that are written on. Will you do that for me today? Don't, don't let no name pass through your mind that you do not write down on that scroll. God said, God said with that salt, there's three things that he does with salt. Number one, salt does when it's used to meat. Some of you know this, only old times the salt would be poured on the meat and it would do three things. Number one, it would, it would penetrate the meat. It would penetrate it and it would purify it and then it would preserve it. Pastor said today that that's what's going to happen, that that's what we need God to turn us into salt. He's using us. He needs us to penetrate the community around us. God wants to use you to help to purify the community around us and so that he can preserve it forever and ever and ever and ever. I am glad that God has been with us today. Stand with me as we close with our benediction. Father, you promised that you were going to be here with us today, and we're grateful that you showed up. Father, you've said something to us about salt and about having influence with those who are around us. We have prayed, laid hands and prayed and anointed the foreheads of those who have said to you today that they would have you take control of their influence, their influence in their homes with their spouses and their children, their, their grandparents and, 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 and grandchildren. Father, those who have said they want you to take control of their influence in the workplace. Those who have said they want you to be master of their influence in the church and in the community, in their neighborhoods. Father, we are giving you today full control over our influence. So Father, take it and use us in a mighty and a powerful way so that when all is said and done and when the role is finally called up yonder, when we get together on the sea of glass to lift our voices with an unnumbered throng and sing the songs of Moses and the Lamb, that we will be able to look across, across that great unnumbered throng and, and see the faces of those who are influenced through the power of the Holy Ghost, was able to help bring with us into glory. And so, Father, we commit ourselves and, and our community, our homes, our families into your hands now. Use us in a mighty and a powerful way so that we will at last make it home to live in glory with you and our loved ones and those who you've placed with in our spheres of influence. Take us from this place today, but not from your presence. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Let everybody say amen and amen, amen, amen. As you are seated and just before we are uh, getting ready to, to go, I want to make you aware of another thing that God has placed within our sphere of influence. I have been meeting for several months with many of the pastors uh, in the area of the different churches, the different denominations. They came to me and they said um, that they wanted to have an event. They wanted to have an event where they were bringing all of the churches together and they wanted to do something with young people and with violence uh, and teaching young people about violence and, and domestic abuse and, and, and bullying and all of those kinds of things and they wanted, uh, they needed a place to do it. And when they said they needed a place, you know what I thought? I thought about us. I said, we got a lot of space here. And then they said they wanted to do it, but they said that they wanted to do it on the first Saturday in December. And I said, oh man, y'all just forgot about me, huh? Y'all forgot about us Seventh-day Adventists because we in church then. Long story short, that's our children's ministry day here next Sabbath. They're doing something with children. I called our children's ministry leader and, and said, look, you got something planned in the afternoon. Can we work this out so that we host all of these churches in the Delray area right here at DOZ on the Sabbath before we kick off our series? They called, made some calls. Marjorie called me back and said, Pastor, you got it. Go ahead. And so on next Sabbath at 4 o'clock, not time, 4 o'clock, daughter of Zion will 
will be hosting the United Believers of Delray, all of these other churches in Delray, we will be hosting that afternoon service right here at Daughter of Zion the week before. God moves in some very mysterious ways. He arranges and positions stuff. So we want to make sure that we invite you back to be with us and that we be good hosts. We get a week ahead of time to practice our smiles and our invitations to folk to come on back. So make sure that you come and you join us here on next Sabbath afternoon at 4 o'clock. We're looking for some of you to join. I'm, I, all I need is 32, but I use 75 if y'all come. Um, this afternoon at what time? At what time? I can't hear you. At what time? I still can't hear you. At what time? All right. I'll see you then. May God bless you.